afternoon, good day. It is Deirdre here from the Cool Food School and welcome to my kitchen yet again. Um, because we can't go into anybody else's kitchen, so here we are. Um, so I am just waiting for Siobhan Berry from Mummy Cooks. There she is, hi Siobhan, how's it going? Um, to join me and there she is. What's an oil tank? And she's just gonna. Hello! Hi! Hi! <laughs> How are you? Good, good. And you? Oh, sure. Look at. Let me just turn up my sound. I can't. I can hardly hear. Yeah. No worries. Kitchen to kitchen. This is a great way to do it. I know. It's brilliant. Have you done anything like this before? I haven't actually. I, I've never. I haven't been on someone else's channel. Um, or doing a cook along, no, so all new yeah. to me. Yeah, it's a bit of crack. Bit of crack, <laughs> sure, why not? <laughs> On a Friday. <laughs> what else would you be doing? So how are things with you? Good, yeah, we're busy, we're busy now. Um, this is, this recipe is, um, this cauliflower cheese bites. This recipe is definitely the most um, used recipe, but then the one that always kind of confuses people. So I hope, I hope I haven't confused you uh, when you were cooking it, because sometimes it doesn't set and then everybody gets upset. <laughs> Did it work? Um, I don't get upset about anything. Do you know? Okay, good, good, if good. If it doesn't set, it doesn't set. I'm sure it'll still set. It smells gorgeous. So good. Um, Siobhan and I prepped them in advance so that we can show you what they're like. Um, so this is your most popular uh, on your book, on, in your book or in your book? Sorry, my husband's moving the camera. Couldn't, I'll have to move it again. That's all right. These are, the, these are the fun times we have during lockdown. Sorry. <laughs> That's, That's right. bad. Oh, I can't see my face. It's hard to get the camera oh. angle right when we're That's doing right. They have it right. Well, when we're sharing a screen as well, it's hard because um, you only get half the screen then and it's, um, you have very little space left. Can you see my food? No. Yeah. Oh, I feel him. <laughs> he moved, he moved me. Yeah. He's, no he's, the, he's the professional cameraman. He came in and I, he didn't like the way I had it set up. Anyway. <laughs> you look the professional cameraman. I do, I do. That's winner, winner, cauliflower tops for dinner, Janie, man. <laughs> okay, so tell us about this recipe then. This is one of your most popular recipes. Yes, so this is in my uh, baby and family book, so that's what they yeah. should look like. So, yeah. so I guess I made this recipe as a finger food for baby, but like it, it doesn't really matter. You can, they're still lovely for a toddler or even for ourselves. But it's just yeah. that idea of being able to pick up the food and eat it or to dip it into some yeah. puree or some sauce, like a tomato sauce or a pesto or something like that. And it's a vegetable. And it's a vegetable, yes. And, and it includes cheese. And they think anything that includes cheese, uh, children love. So yeah. so yeah, it's a kind of one of those uh, recipes. Well, it makes it a much more um, all-round uh, recipe in terms of nutrition because you've got your protein in there yeah. as well. And, and your vegetable and your egg so it's full of yeah you can yeah. have your full you can have your full meal yeah you can yeah. you can have you can have it's also good for things like that are good for taking out and about as well so yeah, if you're, yeah, yeah. yeah so great. if we're going to the park or something we could put them into a flask or into a into a container yeah. so yeah it's good good to have stuff like that yeah okay cool i have mine are mine are ready to be flipped will i show that no no let's cook it and then that's yeah. the Pretend we're on television. This is how you do it when you're on television. So the first thing, the first thing is get your get your pot. Um, I I steam my broth, my cauliflower. So get okay. that boiling. Yeah, I use a steamer, a microwave steamer, which I find really. Oh, brilliant! Good. Yeah, I just have this on top of my um, pot. Okay. So we have, how much cauliflower? I have a small head of cauliflower. Yes, a small head of cauliflower. I'm just gonna cut mine up here. Okay. So yeah. My one is, God, I bought these and they're pretty small. So with, with all of that there, 
I guess. Yeah, like, I know, I know. I said that much. Yeah. Well, I was talking to um, a chef, Connor Spacey. He's a real um, food waste. He's, food waste is a big thing for him. And he was saying that you use that and um, as part of you could put it into to create a vegetable stock, you could use that. I, I'm not that type of chef. Are you that type of chef? No, that, that would... <laughs> Yeah, I would do that. I would make a stock from that, yeah. Would you? Okay. You know, That's you're done, do you know? And, and cook and boil. No, you're right. No, you're right. Yeah, I'm, I'm not a big... Um, yeah, I know. I often hear people doing that, and I'm like, oh, my God. For me, life is too short. <laughs> but a little bit, because I was talking to... Last week on my... Um, on this se this section, the live, I uh, was with the head chef of Ashford Castle. Yes. And he takes about three days to make his sauces. So he was talking about a very traditional French approach to cooking. Yes. Um, and he was talking about doing all that, saving all your bones and your vegetable peels and all that kind of stuff for your broths and your and the basis for your sauces. So, yeah. Yeah, I, I mean, I, I definitely think there's different cooks in this world and, I, and that's definitely not me. <laughs> So you're, you're either a chef, like, cause you, you know, people think like, um, you, you know, when you, you have like people over for dinner in the day, um, I'm not that type of chef, actually. I'm I, like cook. I, I love to cook for the family and I love to batch cook and I love to come up with recipes. But God, if you start telling me I had to make stock and uh, cook for three, make something for three days that I was going to eat wood. So it's not, it's like, oh my goodness, that would kill me. No, I'm, and I'd be much more of a family cook, more of a family cook as you, but I hate to see, like my vegetable wash from the cauliflower, for example, I'm, I'm, I'm going to say that. Yeah. And so I, that's, that. I, I cut it up like that size there. Yeah. And then I'm just going to steam it. Yeah, so I've mine prepped as well, and I'm going to put mine in my white microwave. Now, steam it only for five minutes. Okay. Because um, we want it to be, have a, have a bite on it, because... Um, Otherwise, it will be too soft then when it goes into the, when it comes okay. out of the ground. Okay, I'm going to put mine on. I probably only need to put mine on for about three minutes then. Probably different, is it? Okay. So, I'm going to put some in the oven. Why are these ones in the oven, Siobhan, that are ready to be flipped? Let's show people that. Don't show them that yet, though. You, you've gone too far forward. <laughs> I'm just going to flip them or else they'll be... Uh... Sorry, you're Yeah, I'm just going to no. flip them quickly. So, how's homeschooling going for you? Good, good. Yeah, it's... Um, I, I, honestly, I, I just let them at it and then uh, I go up every now and again. I'm too busy. I'm too busy. I have a, do, I have a job. To keep it going, so um, yeah, it's very good. Like, you have two girls, is it? I have two girls, yeah, one sixth class and fourth class, so okay. they're um, okay. Just sorry, just to let them kind of yeah. just at it, yeah. Oh, yeah, they really are, and they, and they understand how to hello, they understand how to um, oh, to go nice. on to the Zoom classes, onto the class, onto the Google class. Hi, how are you? <laughs> Yeah, I use a fifth class and then I have a third class. So tell them what you just did. Yeah, so they're all good. Yeah, so they're good to. And I'm 14 year old, so he's he's fine. Like, what he did you works. just do? He he just works away. I'm gonna pop these back in the oven. They kind of have to, yeah. They have to. So yeah, so next thing I'm gonna do is my cheese. So 125 grams of uh, cheddar cheese. Now you can you could you could split it eighty twenty. You could use some parmesan if you want as well. Um, I'm just using cheddar here. Okay. Yeah. I'm just gonna grate mine. You're gonna you. grate. Okay. Sorry. Yeah. Yeah. No, that's all right. I should have been doing that while you were doing your cauliflower. Right. right. And then some oregano. So a tablespoon of oregano. Yeah. Gorgeous. You could use nutmeg as well instead if um, want to change up the flavor. I could actually. These are kind of like you can use sweet potato and you can use cauliflower or sorry, it's broccoli as well. So really they kind of adapt for, for all of the different vegetables. It's just really important not to cook uh, the vegetable too much so that it, because it will cook again in the, in the oven. 
Okay. So if you were using sweet potato then, Siobhan, would you um, steam that a little bit lightly as well? Same, Same again, yeah, yeah. yeah. Make sure yeah. When, it, when you um, blitz it that it um, still has a bite in it. Okay. Okay, so I've like cut my cheese grated now. Do I just pop that into my big bowl? Just pop it into a bowl and then put, put a tablespoon of oregano in. Okay. Yep. Do that. And do you use any salt and pepper in this or no? Yeah, I'm, I'm always thinking about the baby. You can. Yeah. Now, the only thing about that is, uh, do you not find cheese uh, has enough salt in it? Would you put it? Would you put salt and pepper in? I put a little bit in. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, I'm, I'm very, I always cook without salt, to be honest, um, as much as possible. But that's just, a, that's just my taste buds. <laughs> um, and then I would always be thinking about the baby, or the yeah. toddler. Yes, yeah, so I know for a baby, yeah, no, you absolutely wouldn't, you wouldn't. Um, but you can put it in at this stage. But definitely not, not too much, because the cheese does have uh, salt in it. Yeah. Okay, so, yeah. So we're just waiting, yeah, we're just waiting on the cauliflower uh, to cook before I'm going to blend it. It's such a, a simple uh, recipe. Yeah, it's really easy. It's lovely because there's only four ingredients. So you've got your egg, your uh, cheese, your oregano, or, and your vegetable, whatever that yeah. may be. Whatever yeah, whatever the vegetable is. Yeah, whatever's yeah. in season, actually, as well. Uh, yeah, so cauliflower, yeah. cauliflower is good right now. Um, sweet potato and broccoli. They're all kind of good right now, anyway. Yeah, um, yeah. And um, so what else, what, have you, what are you busy on? Tell, um, for people who don't know you at all, maybe tell them a bit about your business and about what, you, what you're famous for. Yeah. What I'm famous for. <laughs> well, hopefully it's that I'm, I'm famous for helping parents uh, cook for their family, starting off at the weaning stages. So we are all about, um, you know, making family food and then adapting it for baby. And then what I have is, is uh, I have an academy actually that helps parents uh, cook for their, or sorry, prepare food for their baby. So that's, um, it's an app and then they can uh, like do a four week course. But then also I have a webinar. I run webinars as well actually. Okay. So I do like a finger food webinar and I do a, um, an intensive weaning and I also do a fussy eater uh, webinar. So we're doing lots of them these days. Yeah, no. Well, online is great for that. Actually, I've been doing lots of um, cooking actually with kids, and it's amazing yes. what you can do. Like, it is I know. Who to thought? I I was. Thought? I know. I I went from cooking uh, or having parents in my kitchen in this kitchen here to um, I was out in in a big massive showroom out in City West, and I had four to people, and I thought that was the future. And then that got cut really short. And uh, then next thing I'm online. So it's, it's fantastic. And I don't think I'll ever go back to actually doing that because um, not everyone lives in Dublin. <laughs> so yeah, it's yeah, fantastic. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, it opens up your business to yeah. the whole new world, doesn't it? It does. And, and the other thing about, um, I always found with mums with a small baby is that it's such an effort for them to leave the house oh, and to be there at 10 yeah, o'clock yeah. and... Then they're yeah. breastfeeding the baby during it, or yeah. or it's um, you know it's difficult during during it. So this time now they can the thing is recorded and then they can do whatever with the baby. They're on mute anyway, so yeah, yeah. so it just works better. It just works yeah, better. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's a very good point. Really good for your uh, people who are with, with you. Do you know that's definitely yeah. Um, and then also uh, I find that um, you know. It's the creches are closed and um, everyone's cooking more. So, yeah. so, you know, so that's kind of, kind of where it's at. Now, I've just, I've just cooked the cauliflower there. So it's got a bit of a bite in it. Um, yeah. still, you, you, you wouldn't serve it after five minutes. So I'm just going to put, put it into the blender. Okay. Right. So it's like making cauliflower rice, really, isn't it? I'm just putting mine on for another 30 seconds. Okay, so guys, we're just blending up our uh, kind of par cooked cauliflower. So I'm just going to Sorry, blend as well. So that's my cauliflower there. 
Okay, yeah, brilliant. So it's kind of like cauliflower rice. Yeah, exactly, cauliflower rice. Yeah. So I, yeah, if you, yeah, if you have a little picky eater, this is a, a good one because um, you're getting the cauliflower in there and they probably yeah. like the cheese. So we always kind of pair things that they do like with things yeah. that they might not like particularly like and then um, get them to eat it, you know, get them to maybe help you eat it as well or help make it. Okay. And then also after, tell them what it is yeah. so that they, they understand they're not actually afraid of it because that's really what uh, fussy. Yeah, that's really important. I'm just going to blitz my cauliflower now so it's going to be noisy. <laughs> Children, but that in fact is not a good uh, no it's not it's it's a it's kind of like part of a solution but it's not the full solution yeah i always get asked that question and they're like oh we'll hide it in here and i'm, I'm always reluctant to say like that's what you do because you're not really solving anything by hiding the food in um so it's a, it's, a, it's important to kind of almost tell them after if they have eaten it that you know you did eat uh, cauliflower yeah. by the way <laughs> But also I think we need to think about that in a different way. Like we're, we're making a sauce with, like instead of making a hidden vegetable sauce, we're making a sauce with vegetables in it. The yeah. fact that we blitz it is just the way that we cook it. Yeah, but, but I guess what, what a child that's a fussy eater is, um, they're really, really frightened of the idea of a cauliflower. Um, and yeah. for some reason, maybe because they haven't, Maybe the texture is funny, or maybe the um, color of it is funny to them, or maybe even the look of it is funny. And it's only like that because they haven't eaten it before. That's the only reason that it's like that. Um, yeah. So yeah, so it's always important to, um, to, to uh, get them in the kitchen. This is a really simple one because anything actually that gets your hands in and making it as well is, per is brilliant. Um, um, so that, but also what I like about these is that it's a different way to serve cauliflower as opposed to yeah. just a steamed cauliflower. And I think yeah, look, I, I do a mac and cheese and I always put cauliflower into it. I mean, yeah. I never, never don't, but um, yeah, cauliflower and cheese just goes really well. So yeah, just mixing that up together there. Um, okay, so I put my cheese in now, am I? Yes. Yeah, let's put my cheese in. And you're, yeah, so mixing them all together. Okay, brilliant. Um, yeah, so like, because uh, I, I would talk a lot about fussy eating as well, and, you know, um, people think if their ch child doesn't eat a raw carrot that, you know, they're a fussy eater, but if they could eat a carrot in, in a million other ways, like in a carrot cake or in... Um, My children don't eat raw carrots, so, yeah, it doesn't mean they're a fussy eater at all. It's just, it's no. just I never, I, I didn't give it to them, I remember, at a certain time when I should have. Um, yeah. But, you know... It's not, yeah, it, it doesn't, it's always about like a balanced diet, isn't it? Like they can, they're eating carrots during the day or, you know, in a, in a meal or, or it's in something else or it's in a bolognese. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. But it's more about variety. Then I'm just going to, I'm just going to uh, crack my egg and uh, get that in as well. Yeah, okay. Cool. And getting them involved in the kitchen is just, yeah, key, I think. Yeah, what, so what age would you um, do your classes for? Well, I do them from kind of age, I say about seven, but I do have younger kids doing classes with me when they're working with their parents. Um, but I have so many, every week I do classes and parents email me and say, oh my God, Johnny ate salmon, he's never eaten salmon before, or he ate broccoli, or she ate this, or she, because they, they've never eaten it before, but they ate, ate sweet potatoes, like... I do this lovely uh, recipe with sweet potato, sweet potato nachos. They're absolutely delicious. Um, so, yeah, it's really powerful. Oh, well, it's really absolutely, powerful. yeah. I'm doing a lot of stuff with TYs at the moment as well, with transition years. Are you brilliant? Yeah, because I think they're all struggling to find things to do. Um, there was some fabulous research there, I remember reading, um, where... Um, 
where there was families who were, you know, you know, they were stuck in a rut and they were never cooking uh, home cooked food and there was obesity in the families. And then where they taught the children how to cook. Like, so sometimes it's, there's no hope really, sometimes, you know, teaching those because they just don't understand or they don't want to cook. And then, but then if you teach the children, it changes the path and they don't, they don't go on to be obese and they don't go on to, to you know, they go on to cook home for, cooked food. So they started, it was in England actually, so they started introducing cooking for five-year-olds in, in some English schools and it changed the course of, of or the pathway of, of the, I just think it's so powerful. I, I, wouldn't it it's be so fantastic? powerful? Yes. Wouldn't it, it be so amazing? Yeah, having a positive experience of healthy food as opposed well, to being this awful yeah. thing, you know. Oh, Understanding how easy it is really, because yeah. ultimately that's what it is. It's, it's just putting a few ingredients together. It's the same as unwrapping um, and heating up something in a microwave sometimes or yeah, putting yeah, together yeah. food, you know? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, but not everybody has, has the same amazing skills to have Sean. Well, it's not, I just, that's the thing. I don't think it's like the, it's skill and coach either. And, and, and like, that's what I've always tried to say, you know, trying to pick simple ingredients, simple foods um, yeah, yeah. and put them together. So, okay, so we have our lovely mixture. So that's your mixture there. Now you're going to get your hands in and you're going to, um, so if you, if you could grease a, um, a baking tin. Now I have, I have this, uh, this matter, which is great. Do you have a um, paper on it? Is that all right? Perfect. Yeah. yeah. So you're just going to make them into patties with your hands. Okay. It's kind of... Use the spoon as well, if, if that's easier. A bit of, now this is where I will be getting the, the little, um, some it's, yeah. yeah, 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 absolutely. Kids love getting their hands dirty with anything. Yeah, I always do my, um, when I'm doing, you know, breaded fish or, or chicken or something like that. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. They love they that. They love that. We're doing a thing at the moment where uh, we're cooking from around the world. So the kids pick a country from, I have a, a world map up here, the kids pick a country, they, they put on a blindfold and pick a country. Brilliant. And we go and research that country, food from that country. Is that Team Roy, is it? No, that's just my own kids here in the house. Oh, your own kids, oh brilliant. That's fantastic. Yeah, so we've had food from the Congo and we've had food from um, uh, America, that was the teenager, he somehow- What did you from have from the Congo? <laughs> <laughs> we did, yeah. We did, did, did do a lot of research for that. Um, we had a chicken and peanut curry. It's actually really nice. Wow. Yeah. And then we've also done, I'm just looking at the map now here, we've done um, Zambia. So that was um, another kind of curry kind of thing. It was a beef curry. Um, and we've done, uh, where have we done? Japan, China, all the, uh, Mexico. So it's kind of really interesting. interesting interesting way for families who are stuck in a rut um, of cooking, you know, you're making the same dishes over and over and over again. But also, but also we're all getting bored. Like I know I am. So we're trying, try actually this week I made a, an extra effort just to have different meals. Um, yeah. And like that, I get the kids involved. Now they might not always help me with it, but it's more involved in deciding what we're going to eat. Yeah. Um, so it doesn't fall to me every day, but yeah, it's, I think everybody's, everybody's definitely um, getting tired of cooking. Yeah, those, yeah. yeah. yeah I know. Yeah. Was like, yeah, during the week as well. Oh my God. Like I don't I think... cook all day. It was probably the same as you. You're cooking yeah. all day. I'm cooking doing classes and I'm like, oh my God, now let's turn around and cook a dinner. I know. I find, I, ha I do definitely uh, freeze a lot of food. So last night I, um, I was like running out of ideas and it was, I was later coming to the kitchen. So I had, um, I was like, what do I have in the freezer? So I had burgers that I had made and they have veg in them. Um, so I, I did put them in the oven and then I had tomato sauce from the freezer as well. And then I did it with couscous. And I swear, it was like the, their favorite meal of the week. And I was like, oh God, I just put that together in five minutes because I, I actually had no food in the house. But sometimes the freezer can really save you like that, you know. Oh, you absolutely, yeah, yeah. 
Yeah. So when I'm when I'm making those burgers, um, you know, I might make them fresh, but I'll always double up. I'll always make twice the amount. Yeah. And then freeze them. Yeah. Um, it's a great idea for during the week when you're just like. Yes. Ah. And I like everybody's working at home, and it, while it might seem a little bit easier, you know, I might be on calls at half five, six o'clock, and then you come out and you just try and cook a dinner for. Yeah. For a family, like. Slow cooker is a really good idea for that if you're if you're um if you're time pressed if you know that you're going to be on a call till half five six and you don't have time for so you can start the food dinner at like one o'clock in a slow cooker or even earlier you could do it in the morning and have it yeah, yeah, yeah. in there but they are like I think they're underused um, slow cookers that that really save you time or save you um the prep work you know you might have. You know, you might have a bit of time in the morning, but not in the afternoon because it's a busy day. So what's your top recipe? What's, what's the thing that you make the most in your slow cooker? It's usually beef because, it, you know, it really tenderizes it. Or, or lamb, actually. Lamb or beef. Um, I have a lovely beef chili recipe. Um, actually, I've, I've just done a, um, a slow cooker ebook, So that's coming out next week. Um, so I have... I have curries and I have beef curries and I have some vegetarian as well. And um, I have a, a butter and a squash lasagna actually that I do with it Ooh. as well. Yeah. In a, cooker. In a slow cooker, yeah. Well, you see, the thing about a slow cooker is it just, it's literally about um, not, putting in, not putting too much liquid in because you don't lose the liquid uh, by cooking. So it's yeah. just about adapting recipes you already have, really. Okay. Um, but yeah, no, I love love the old slow cooker. So this is this yeah. is yeah, this is what they look like. Yeah, yeah. snap. <laughs> <laughs> so that goes into the oven for um, ten minutes. Put it on for ten minutes first. Yeah, and then flip it over, and then another ten minutes at two hundred degrees. Okay, how are yours looking? I'm gonna take my my cooked ones out now. Great. Guess what we're having for lunch? <laughs> <laughs> okay. Do you know what I love about this though? Is that, do you know, when I, when I was growing up, I think you're younger than me, Siobhan, um, the only way you could ever eat cauliflower was boiled to a complete mush. Okay. <laughs> or if you're really posh, you might get a little bit sauce on the top. It, it, yeah, no, actually, I, I, went to, um, I went to boarding school and everything was cooked to a mush. Okay. And I, like, like that, cauliflower or broccoli or anything, carrots even, were absolutely mank. Um, and yeah. I could only eat them if they're in something. But yeah, I, I think the secret to um, cooking vegetables is to steam them and, and, and make sure there's a bit of a bite in them. I don't yeah. like actually boiled uh, vegetables. No, I, no. I really don't. That's the way it used to be, but like now, with your cauliflower, you get like, people are so creative now with a piece of cauliflower. I, I absolutely adore uh, cauliflower. It's my favorite uh, vegetable. I adore it yeah, all I day. Like curried and, and um, oh, roasted. It's divine. There was one time during the year where it's it's difficult to get. I'm trying to think when that is. I remember, um, there is one month. I can't remember what, but there is one month, and I I know uh, from going into from veg shops being like, no, there's no cauliflower. And um, so that's kind of what, that's what they look like there. Yeah. Perfect. Okay. Taste one now. So, yeah, so the idea, I, I mean, I, I'm always thinking about the baby. So it's its something that's really soft and it, there's no lumps in it. Yeah. I could eat the whole lot of it. <laughs> um, but like I would be, I would be putting it with, um, actually I have some pesto. Oh yeah. I always make, um, I always make some courgette pesto actually, and it, it, it lasts for the week. Um, okay, so you use courgette instead of what? Instead of? Not instead of, I just add it into the, so I have basil, I have courgette, I have basil, I have, um, what else do I have? Uh, Parmesan cheese, and I have a garlic clove and oil. Pine nuts? I'm sorry, and pine nuts. 
So, I, yeah, so I, I, I'm thinking of the baby now again, but you dip it in like that. Yeah. Mm. But it's, it's really nice for um, yeah, a toddler as well. And yeah. like that doesn't, like if the, if the toddler was anyway afraid of, or the child was anyway afraid of, of uh, cauliflower, it doesn't look anything like it. Um, and then as soon as they get used to the textures, then we start telling them what's in it and getting them to make it and saying, saying positive things like, she, you love cauliflower, don't you? When we start saying, you hate cauliflower, it's in their head. <laughs> and we do that a lot, don't we? We were like, oh, sure, you don't like um, vegetables. Or you don't like uh, fruit. Or you're, you're a fussy eater. And all those things, like, it's almost like saying to a child, you're bold. And then they have to be bold. Because <laughs> yeah. that's what they're called. That's that's what they're... Yeah. Well, so. I read research somewhere that um, we have to present a child with a new food, anything from the number varies, but 15 to 20 times, roughly. But that us as parents give up after three attempts. So I, I don't like that. I, I don't agree with that, actually, because it's you almost saying to the, the mother um, or the father that they have to just chuck it in front of them 14 times. It doesn't, it, it actually doesn't really mean anything if you don't. What it, what, what it, should, what it kind of means is that um, you're always um, presenting food. So, so for instance, if you're, um, you know, if you're having cauliflower and you're having broccoli and you're having carrots, that it's always presented to the child. Now, whether they eat it or not, it's still presented and you're saying, I'd like you to eat it. I'd like you to try it. I'm well done for trying or well done for keeping it on your plate. That's kind of what it means. I, th I think that idea of saying to someone, chuck it at them 14 times and then they'll eat it. It doesn't mean anything unless there's something behind it, you know? No, 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 no. But I think what, what, what the research is saying is that we have to keep presenting food to our kids, as you're saying. But that sometimes when the child refuses it a couple of times, the parent, the parent says, oh, they don't like that. And they never present it again. Yeah. So but that's... That yeah. Repeat exposure to the food is what... Um, <laughs> so it's, it's not actually a research thing. It's, a, it's a, someone said that sometime and that's what's carried on. And people, people then use it as a, that's what the answer is, if you know what I mean. It's, and it, it, there's, there's so much behind that um, that it, it confuses people when you say that to them because then they're like, I don't know what to be doing. So I just always say, yeah, like you said there, just present the food. I always think actually putting food in the middle of the table is a really good mm -hmm. idea. That's presenting all the time and you choose what you want and, you, and then you, you know, positive feedback for trying things. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And yeah, something like this could be a shared plate actually. So you could have that and then you have your favorite pesto or your favorite tomato sauce in the middle. And then everyone's just dipping in. Um, the child just, like, if you presented that to a child on their own, then they'd be like, oh my gosh, that's too much. I'm, not, I'm never going to eat that and I'm never going to even try it because you think I'm going to eat it all, so. Yeah, yeah. Well, small portions, I think, as well, is, is, is really important with children, is to give them small amounts of food. Yes. And then if they want more, to give them more. Yes. But not the heat place where they're overwhelmed with um, so much yeah. food. So, so actually, if, if you look at the plate then, so for a child, it's half of that plate, but it's half of the middle of it, because that's what yeah. we're, we serve. And then for a toddler, it's quarter. Okay. So, so would, you, would you say two, two of these for a toddler then? Two of these little patties? Two of these for a toddler with a little bit of sauce. Yeah, yeah, yeah. perfect. Yeah. Perfect. And, and would that got, be a snack or would that be kind of a lunch? You could do it as a lunch. You could do it as a yeah. lunch, yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Um, or you could have it as part of the dinner, you know? And you could have a bit of meat with it or something as well. Like it's just, it's just, I guess it's just, like you said, it's about changing it up. If we're, if we're always going to offer meat and two veg, that's boring. Um, but also it is important. I think it's really important to offer meat and veg, two veg because it's visual. Whereas if you do a stew or if you do a, a curry all the time, it's not, it's not as visual. Um, but the child, so they don't know that the carrot is red or they don't know that the broccoli is, is green, because you've always mushed it in with something, you know, that's not good either. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. No, but, yeah. So I think it's just offering them a whole load of different varieties, food in a yeah. different variety of, way, of ways. But and even ourselves, do you find that, that you're getting tired of food that you liked before, and you're thinking, oh my God. So we, we love, um, we, we often get like a, 
a chicken tikka um, takeaway. Yeah. I have find it very hard to make my own, like I do have my own recipe, but this, the one from Bombay is just divine, Ch the chicken tikka. But now I'm totally sick of it. Because <laughs> it's like, oh, it's like my, lo it was like my lockdown sort of meal. And now I'm like, oh, don't, I don't want that anymore. And I'm really like looking for uh, different foods, different, you know, I know, I think we, we always do a takeaway on a Saturday. That's our big lockdown. Yeah. Right now. And um, like, the, we're lucky, it's like no more than you. There's lots of places to go to. We kind of, we try to share out the love, you know, and, and I know. places all the time. Well, I'm actually so sick of them all now. So sick of it. Although we did, we did China Szechuan, how do you pronounce that, um, up here in Sandyford. No, it's great. You have, to book, you have to book a slot almost a week. I know, yeah. We did it, we did it over Christmas. It was delicious. Oh, it was divine. It was mm. divine. It was really yeah. a real treat. And it was different. It was different. Yeah. Yeah, yeah like, it's, you know, as much as we can, I think we just need to change it up for ourselves as well. Um, and then, and then you know, everyone gets interested then, don't they? I love what you're doing, though. I think that's a great idea. To yeah, do. well, that's why we started doing that, because literally it was fun. God. It's just boring, really. It's boring, <laughs> yeah. And I mean, even though like I would be experimental in the kitchen, but sometimes you get to the stage where it's too late to get started experimenting and you're just turning out the same old stuff over and over again. So I, I know. So that you guys pick something, you go research it, find, a, find something, and I'll make it. And oh, yeah. we made, they made, for Japan, they made miso salmon and um, sushi. Wow. Yeah. They made sushi. Huh? And sushi. They make soup. Wow, that's yeah, amazing. It's actually very easy. Sushi is very easy to make. Yeah. Um, Just, did you get the special rice? Yeah, you get sushi rice and you get your seaweed. And, yeah. and then it's just your filling. So we just have oh, nice. um, tuna, shines tuna, shines tuna, and um, some avocado. It was gorgeous. It's delicious. Brilliant. Yeah, yeah. And they did, they did a uh, noodle broth and everything. It was really tasty, actually. And I think because it was so different, yeah. We were all like, oh, this is actually really nice. And um, so that was so we, we did, um, uh, not last, was it last week or the week before we did date night? So myself and my husband uh, were on our date and the two girls cooked the dinner for us. Oh, <laughs> and, served to us. and we had a menu and everything. So it was great fun. And I even got you? dressed up and put on oh. makeup. <laughs> what did the girls cook for you? So they, they did... Um, Actually, she did a chicken tikka, um, but I, I, I uh, had the paste ready for her. So she just put it, she just put it together. And then for dessert, oh, actually, she did calamari, actually, to start. And then, oh, and then a chicken tikka. Yes. Well, actually, I have an air fryer, and it's fantastic. So okay. it's just, yeah, it was just her dipping it into the, the breadcrumbs and the, um, and the egg, and then into the air fryer. So it was lovely. Okay, my air fryer, I have an air fryer and I've used it very little. I must get it out and use it because my sister goes on about it a lot. She uses hers all the time as well. Um, yeah, I'm like, so if you want to make chips, so many chips are really, really good. Um, yeah. I have a Ninja Foodie. So it's, it's actually, um, it's, it's what it says, a Ninja. It literally, it does everything. So it, it um, bakes, it, um, it's a pressure cooker, it's a slow cooker. It's... Okay. Um, it's also an air fryer. So you, I do a chicken in it. So I would um, use the pressure cooker to cook the chicken. You're not using, you're using the minimal amount of oil and you don't have to baste it. And it's just so succulent. And then to crisp it, then I use the air fryer after. And it's divine. That it's so easy. Thing, is, that, is that what that is? It's a bit like a no, it's called a ninja foodie. Okay. Okay. I think it's a bit along the same lines as a thermal mix. Yeah, so that's yeah, I think the thermal mix can do more because it's more like a baking tool as well. But yeah, it can do everything. Like, it can do oh yeah, no, that that can do everything. That and that's expensive. This isn't. Um, this is a much lower price range, and okay. um, it is nice. Yeah, it's it's it's. Uh, but yeah, air fryer. I you know I, I like like yourself. Um, I should probably use it more, but um, it is not. It is nice. It does. It crisps it up really nicely, like better than an oven would. Yeah. Oh, I must really, I've heard loads of people talking about it on Instagram mostly and, um, and my sister. I must actually dig it out and start using it a bit more. Yeah. You know, I think that's like calamari in that. Yes. 
Come, any, anything that you want to crisp, anything that you don't want to be deep fat frying, really. Mm -hmm. And then you're, you're um, crisping it up in the, in the air fryer. Okay, so folks, high flare tops. Yes. Air fryer, use your slow cooker. <laughs> I think that's everything for today. Brilliant. Thank you so much, Siobhan. Thanks for having me. I'm going to pop that recipe up and I'll put up, you have a discount for your shop, is that right? Oh yes, so we have all of our Mummy Cooks products, so all of our pots and our flasks and our books. Okay, so um, I have a discount code for that and I will pop that up in the, um, I'll save this as an IGTV and I will pop the recipe and the code in the caption. Great. Thank you so much, my dear. Thank you. <laughs> have a lovely weekend. Yes, you too. I'm, so, I'm, I'm here munching away on my cauliflower tops. They're delicious. Thank you so much. Good. Bye. Bye, everybody. <laughs> Thanks for tuning in. <laughs> Thank you.